Okay, welcome back class. We are finishing chapter 16 in this video. We're going to go through a few um, other things that our body does to help avoid infections. One of those is interferons. I love interferons. I think they are just a genius way that our cells can work together to protect our bodies. So interferons will interfere or inhibit um, viral replication. We don't want viruses growing in our cells. We want our cells to grow and be healthy and do what they need to do. So these interferons will stop a viral infection from happening. However, interferons are effective only for short periods of time. Um, they can cause side effects when they're injected. The main interferons we're going to worry about are interferon alpha and interferon beta. So when one cell is infected with a virus, they're going to create interferon alpha and interferon beta. However, when the cell is infected with a virus and it creates interferon alpha and interferon beta, it doesn't help the cell that's infected. It helps the cells around it. So your cell is infected. It produces these two interferons. The interferons travel to the other cells and the other cells start producing antiviral proteins. Um, this would include things like oligoadenylate synthetase which will degrade viral messenger RNA, so the virus can't be functioning, and it'll produce protein kinase, which will inhibit the protein synthesis, so a virus can't start making proteins. So without RNA or proteins, your virus isn't able to create anything to grow or spread, so your viral infection will be contained at that point. There's also a gamma interferon, but we're not gonna talk about that at this point. So here you have, here is your first cell. This virus comes in and infects it, um, starts making lots of baby viruses. But when that happens, it triggers your cell to make interferon. So here's alpha interferons and beta interferons. They travel to the next cell, to the neighboring cell. That neighboring cell picks up that interferon and says, uh-oh, we got to protect ourselves. So it starts making things like oligoadenylate synthetase and protein kinase. So if this virus tries to spread here, its life cycle is ended. It can't function anymore. So that helps. Even though this first cell is gone, it sacrifices itself royally in protecting all the cells around it. And then these cells are able to reproduce and fill in the gap from the cells that were infected. Okay, we already talked about how bacteria can create siderophores to take iron away from our bodies. Um, our bodies want the iron for ourselves, so we create iron binding proteins. Um, iron binding proteins include transferrin, lactoferrin, ferritin, and hemoglobin. Um, I'm not likely to ask you where these different iron proteins, iron binding proteins are found, but if you're just familiar that we have these things that bind iron in our bodies, so that helps us to grow and also helps limit the available availability of iron for a bacteria to grow. Then there are antimicrobial peptides. These are small little peptides, small protein sequences that can be found in a lot of different types of animals and plants that are made in response to our microbes. In humans, this would include dermicidin, defensins, thrombicidin. You may have heard of some of these before. These antimicrobial peptides have a broad spectrum of activity, but microbes have not really been able to develop much resistance to them, and they function over a wide range of pH. Immune systems can be affected by some different factors. One of those would be genetic resistance, just different genes. People with different genes have various levels of being susceptible to, to different diseases. So an example would be people who have sickle cell, which is a type of genetic difference. Um, they are more protected against malaria. At different ages, people who are very young, so less than like two, and the elderly, older than 65 or 70, are going to be more susceptible to disease. And also observing healthy protocols. So if you are eating a diet that is rich in fiber and vegetables compared to a diet that is just lots of simple sugars and fried foods. Um, if you are a smoker or not a smoker, 
um, someone who is engaging in safe sex practices or someone who is not. Those are all are going to be able to have impacts on your, on your immunity. So you can now describe to me what are interferons, what are the role of siderophores in infection, and why are immunologists interested in AMPs, or antimicrobial peptides? So let's just kind of review here our first line of defense. The epidermis, which is a physical barrier. Mucous membranes, which also help inhibit microbes getting in. Mucus, which can trap microbes, especially in your respiratory and gastrointestinal tracts. The lacrimal apparatus, which produces tears. Saliva, which washes microbes off of teeth. Hairs in your nose, which help filter out microbes and dust. Cilia, which form that cilia escalator to keep microbes and dust out of your upper respiratory tract. Epiglottis, which helps stop microbes from, from getting into your lower respiratory tract. Urine, which washes microbes from the urethra. Vaginal secretions, which move microbes out of the vagina. Peristalsis, defecation and vomiting, which expel microbes from the gastrointestinal tract. Sebum, which is acidic. Lysozyme, which breaks down peptidic glycan. Saliva, which contains a whole bunch of enzymes. Gastric juice, which is super acidic, destroys bacteria and most toxins in the stomach. Urine, which has a bunch of chemicals. And vaginal secretions, which are acidic to help reduce fungal growth. Second line of defense, we have phagocytes, which includes neutrophils, eosinophils, dendritic cells, and macrophages. Natural killer cells, which we're coming back to in Chapter 17. Inflammation, which helps limit um, where a microbe can spread and destroys the microbes and repairs the damaged tissue. Fever, which intensifies interferons, helps inhibit the growth of microbes, and speeds up your body's ability to repair itself. Complement, which causes cytolysis, promotes phagocytosis, and contributes to inflammation. Interferons, which protect uninfected cells from viral infection. Iron binding proteins, which inhibit the ability of bacteria to access iron, and antimicrobial peptides, which can have a broad range of effects. All right, so I'm excited to talk about Chapter 17. Um, some of my favorite parts of the immune system are in Chapter 17. I think natural killer cells are probably my favorite cells. So I look forward to coming back and talking to you in our next chapter. I'll see you later, and always let me know if you have any questions. Bye.